Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and I'm here today in Karlovac, Croatia, at the HS Product Factory, taking a look at some of the historical firearms that have been made by HS Product and by IM Metal, which was the former name of the company. Now today we're taking a look at the PHP MV, or Pervi Hrvatski uh, Pistoli, the first Croatian pistol. The MV uh, are the initials of its designer, Marko Vukovec, and this is a gun that was developed actually initially for the Yugoslavian army in the late 1980s. Vukovec came up with the idea um, as something to replace the M57, which was a slightly modified copy of the Soviet Tokarev. It had been in service, obviously, for quite a long time. By the 1980s it's clear that you know, the pistol caliber of the future is going to be 9mm, not 7.62 Tokarev. And so Vukovets comes, Vukovec comes up with uh, a new pistol design. And to do this he looks at, well, what's the best pistol out there? And comes to the conclusion that it's the P38. And so the P38 is the basis for the design of the PHP. Now we have a previous video looking at the original, one of the original prototypes made for the Yugoslavs. What we're concentrating on today is the version of this pistol, or the two versions of this pistol, that actually went into full production. And that would be the PHP for the Croatian military after Croatia declared its independence from Greater Yugoslavia. Um, let's see, so Croatia declared its independence in June of 1991, taking effect formally in October of 91. But people saw this coming. The Croatian army didn't formally exist before it declared independence. It was simply part of the Yugoslav People's Army. But there was also a Croatian territorial defense force that was armed. And in April of 1990, the Yugoslav People's Army decided to confiscate all the arms from the territorial defense forces in anticipation that there might be an independence uprising coming. Uh, in response to this, the Croatian government uh, formed its own, uh, basically a, a secondary version of the uh, defense forces, a Croatian National Guard called the ZNG, which was made legal because it was technically a part of the police forces, although commanded by the Ministry of Defense. Now this force, the ZNG, would eventually become the Croatian army formally after independence was declared. And at that point, they're in significant need of firearms. So one of the results of this was development and manufacture of a whole bunch of very simple, easy to make submachine guns in Croatia by a wide variety of manufacturers. But the ZNG also needed pistols. Now IM Metal, Vukovic, has this pistol design that he's already put together that wasn't of interest to the Yugoslav uh, military because it was a bit too expensive and complicated to make. But when he presents it to the new Croatian army, they are very much interested because this is a gun that can be manufactured in Croatia. It's already essentially available. And so in 1992 this is formally adopted as the MV9 uh, for 9mm Marko Vukovac. So there would eventually be two versions. Let's go ahead and take a look at both and see what this pistol really is. So there are two versions of the PHP. A long barreled version, that's a 5.5 inch or 140 millimeter barrel, and a short barreled version, which is 4 inch or 103 millimeter approximately. The first production was the long barrel. This accounts for about 5,000 guns, and then there were about another 11,000 of the short barreled version made. And the, the reason for the change was twofold. One was simplification of some of the parts, which we'll take a look at in a moment, and the other was simply to make the gun shorter to make it more compact. This was a bit larger than it needed to be and a bit impractical for a lot of guys. The basic mechanical function is identical on both guns. So we have a double feed single, or a double stack single feed magazine with a capacity of 15 rounds. It's worth pointing out, if you haven't seen the previous video in this series, that the original prototypes were actually a double stack double feed magazine that held 17. However, it was found that uh, you would get a more durable magazine with single, single stack uh, feed lips, and the pistol was more reliable. Because it only has one position that it has to feed cartridges from, it was easier to design the gun to feed reliably instead of requiring two separate feed paths, one from the left and one from the right, that had to be equally functional and reliable. So 
15 rounds single stack mag single feed magazine on this. Like the P38 that it's based on, this is a double action single action system, so I can cock it. Uh, there is a safety here that I can engage. Uh, a bit disconcertingly, if you have the safety on and pull the trigger, the hammer will drop. However, uh, the safety blocks the hammer from actually hitting the firing pin. You can see when I do this that the hammer will not go any farther than this, where if I have the safety disengaged, the gun will actually fire. Now, when I pull the trigger, the hammer goes all the way down, hits the firing pin, and then rebounds under spring pressure. The other levers here are a slide stop here, and a disassembly lever here. And of course, magazine release on the left side. These are all marked PHP MV, and again that's first Croatian pistol, Marko Vukovec, and caliber 9mm para. On the opposite side we have patent marking, IMP is, uh, that's the company logo for uh, IM Metal, which is the original company that was making these, made in Croatia, and serial numbers on the frame and the slide, and there's also a serial number on the barrel, uh, which we'll see, it's on the underside here, we'll see that when we take it apart. The operational system here is taken straight from the P38. You can see that the barrel reciprocates straight backwards just slightly when it starts to open, and then it has a pivoting block like a P38. So let's go ahead and take this apart, which is a little bit funky. So I'm going to lock the slide open. I'm then going to take the disassembly lever here and pivot it down like that. Then the slide goes forward, and it will go forward to this point. I need to actually pull it slightly back and drop the hammer. Then I can pull the slide a bit farther forward. There's a recoil spring here underneath the barrel, and that I have to pull out at this point, which is a little tricky. There we go. The spring comes out, and then the slide and barrel assembly come off the front of the gun. You can see there's a uh, guide rod for the spring here that is permanently, solidly fixed in place. So when the gun's assembled, that's where the recoil spring is going. On this first version we have an ejector right here in the center, and uh, well, that's pretty much the gist of it. As for the locking system, it is all fundamentally based on this locking block. So when the gun's in battery, that block is holding the barrel and the slide together. The slide starts to reciprocate, which causes the locking block to drop down. Once it's dropped down, it is out of engagement with the slide. So these two lugs on the locking block lock into these two slots in the slide. So that is locked. And that is unlocked. Once it's unlocked, the barrel stops moving, the slide continues backward, where it can kick out the empty case and then load a new one. I mentioned the serial number on the barrel. There it is. That flat on the barrel is there for disassembly. So to take this the rest of the way apart, we're going to just pull the locking block out. It's held in place by a little wire spring. And then the barrel comes have to. This is a little bit funky. Get the barrel back. Right there. There we go. And then you can slide the front sight out upside down through the front of the slide. I should also point out here uh, there is a Croatian national crest on the top of the slide. Now the second version is actually slightly different because uh, one of the changes in production, not just to make it shorter, but there was also a change to the controls made. You can see where this has the slide stop and the disassembly lever as separate parts. On the short version, they're combined in a single lever, or a single pin, two levers, uh, one pin that holds them both in place. So it's simplified. This is also substantially easier to disassemble. So on this guy, we are going to, again, lock the slide open, pivot down the disassembly bar there. Then the slide comes forward. Once again, I'm going to drop the hammer. And then you can take the slide to this point and it will actually lift up at the front and come off. So 
this, the rails of the slide come forward and off just like that. And I don't have to peel the recoil spring out from the gun. The assembly of the slide, however, is still the same. So we can take the locking block out. And then pivot it around. These two little cutouts in the side of the slide are there specifically to give clearance for this lug to pivot around and then you can take the barrel out. If we compare the frames for the short version and the long version there are a couple of subtle but relevant differences. For one thing, the central mounted ejector was moved to a side mounted spring loaded ejector instead of one that just kind of flops on its own weight. You'll notice two little small cuts right here. Those are what allow the slide to be dropped in instead of slid all the way back from the front. And then there's a, a little cutout here and that's to facilitate uh, the installation of this single pin combination lever system. So because of the ejectors, if for no other reason, uh, you cannot interchange the slides on the frames. The short version has to have the short slide, the long version has to have the long slide. There are a few other mostly cosmetic changes um, that were introduced over the course of production, including things like a change in the serration style of the hammers. Another interesting manufacturing element to point out is the fact that both the barrels have a visible seam right here, basically in front of the chamber. And the reason for this is at this point IM Metal did not have the machinery to manufacture its own barrels. So it purchased these barrels, just the actual rifled section of the barrel from Lothar Walther, and then manufactured the chamber and barrel lug section, and then they're connected together here. I suspect they're threaded together, but I don't know for sure. They may be pressed. Another of those minor changes was a change in style of the ejector. Uh, this is our early short or early long gun, this is our later short gun. The sights also changed slightly. The later guns have slightly wider sights, the early guns have narrower sights. And you can also see that on the front sights here. Now I don't normally reassemble guns on camera, but I want to do it in this case because the process is slightly different for the two different models and it's kind of a, a, a funky sort of picky uh, process. What you have here is a pair of rails on the barrel itself and a pair of rails on the slide. And the barrel rails slide in place right in the front of the frame here first. So you have to slide the barrel in, then the slide comes onto the back frame rails and you bring the slide in to right about this point and then install the mainspring which is kind of a wiggly fiddly affair. You may find that it's easiest if you can get it started to uh, thread it in. All right, so that's now in there. Now I need to make sure that the ejector is down and out of the way, like that. And then I can pull the slide in, lock it open, drop that lever back in place, and presto the pistol is reassembled. The process for the short version is quite a bit easier. So on this one I put the spring in first, like that. I again have to pay attention to the ejector here because I'm going to take the slide, hook the rails in at the back, slide it back, make sure the ejector is down under the slide, and then this comes back to that position where it can now drop straight into the frame. Now I can pull it back, lock the slide open, flip the disassembly lever back, and that one is good to go. Obviously as you can see the disassembly process kind of leaves something to be desired, and especially with early versions of the gun there were problems with parts breakage in particular. Now a lot of those problems were corrected over the course of production, over the course of a couple of years, as IM Metal basically got its feet un under itself uh, in the production process. Um, in general there really was quite a bit of uh, pride of ownership in the Croatian army with these pistols. This was, you know, pistols aren't the most 
substantial, important weapon to a military force, but they give one a sense of self-protection and the idea of having a domestic Croatian pistol as opposed to, uh, you know, basically leftover weapons from the Yugoslav People's Army uh, was really a point of pride to a lot of soldiers. So, um, it, it's, it's really a two-sided weapon. Yes, it has technical flaws, but it also uh, was a significant morale-boosting development uh, for the Croatian army to have. There are a couple of different ways that you can look at the PHP. On the one hand, it's not the world's best pistol. There are some substantial design shortcomings in it, as you can see, for example, from the disassembly process. There is, in fact, sort of a, a joke name for the gun in Croatian service, that PHP doesn't stand for First Croatian Pistol, it stands for First Croatian Miss, uh, because of the shortcomings in the design. And, like, they're true. There's nothing... you can't get around that fact. However, it's also a pistol that was the opportunity for IM Metal, later HS product, to actually put a gun into mass production. And you don't learn how to properly do that without trying it first. Uh, like, your first pistol is never going to be a breakaway success, unless you're Gaston Glock, but they need experience actually doing this. And the PHP gives them 16,000 guns worth of experience in actually producing a pistol. And it would lead to the HS-95, which would then lead to the HS-2000, which became a massive runaway success in the United States, with like 6 million total sold under the Springfield brand name as the XD. So, uh, a big thanks to HS Product for giving me the opportunity to take a look at a couple of their early PHPs. A bunch of these were actually surplus by the Croatian army, purchased by importers in the US, and so these guns are actually available in the United States, which is pretty cool. So if you're interested in them, they are out there and available. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.